We're going to find a way to do it. You ready to find a way to do it? Bring some trigonometry. Here's our idea. Let's see if I remember how to do this in a while. First thing we're going to do, oh yeah, we're going to bound this. We're going to make up a triangle. So, let's do it right there. What I'm going to do is take part of my, my kind of a unit circle, not really, and make it better. That's better. I'm going to take my unit circle. What I'm going to do is take an arbitrary angle. I can't be specific because, of course, we want this to work all the time. So I'm going to draw that. Now, what I'm going to do from this, I'm going to make up two triangles. I'm going to drop a perpendicular right from here. I'm also going to drop a perpendicular that goes like that. Okay, so let me let me define a couple things. <laughs> Firstly, we're going to call X our angle. tell you is if we, if we need to solve for that, let's see, this is going to be our tan x. How far is this distance right here? From here to here. Why? So would you agree that, stick with me here folks, are you okay that x is our angle firstly? I'm, I'm calling this length y, okie dokie, <coughs> and, and this, this is one from, from here to here. That's one. <coughs> Give me the relationship of tan x then. Sine of cosine? Sine of cosine, yes, in the specific instance with a large triangle. Sine, tangent is opposite over adjacent, true? What's the opposite? Y over one. One, because that is the unit circle. Well, interestingly then, Y equals tan X. So this equals tan X. Oh, let's see, one more thing. We also need this distance, and we need that distance right there. So let's say, what do we want to do? This coordinate is, what's the coordinate on a unit circle? Square root of 2 over 2. Well, that would be for a specific angle. What's the, what is it? Is it sine, sine cosine or cosine sine? Sine cosine. Cosine cosine. Sine. 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 Jeez, I'm asking you. Come on, you gotta know this. Agree? Okay. Because yes, sine x is typically y for inside triangle. What that what that means is, I'll, I'll try not to screw this up too much for for this inside stuff. That means that our our x for this inside triangle is cosine x. Do you agree? Yeah. That means that our, our y is actually sine x. Right. Now, also, what we're going to be doing is looking at this, this, not this, well, this one gives our height, but also this one, that triangle right there. What we're going to be doing is comparing the areas of these triangles. So let, let me recap just in, in 30, well, 30 seconds what we've done. 
We've gone ahead, we made up two, actually we have three triangles. This one just gave us the height. That gave us the height. This would be cosine, but more importantly, this one, this height is sine x. Do you all agree with that one? Furthermore, if I call this y, y is equal to tan x because of the relationship of x and 1. You guys okay with that one? Okay. Now we're ready to compare the triangle. So we've got, we actually have three things going on. I need you to see all three things. First, we have a big triangle. You see the big triangle, yes? We have a smaller triangle that's this one. So we have big triangle, we have small triangle, and then we have sector. Do you agree with that? So what we want to do is com consider the areas. We have big triangle, we have sector, and we have small triangle. Can you tell me how you find the area of the triangle? It's the area of the triangle. Oh, yeah. Or base times height number two, yes? One half base time. Let's look at the big triangle. What's the, uh, what's the base? Base is one. Times. What's the height? Instead of y, let's say tan x. And to find the triangle, I divide by 2. I need to show a hand see if you're okay with the area of a large triangle. Base times height over 2, we have base 1. Height is y, yes, but y equals tan x. So I'm going to use tan x because I want everything in the same variable and all in x's. And then divided by 2. Uh, let's do this small triangle, then we'll talk about the sector. Small triangle, that's this one right here. Not this too small one, but this one right there. Are you with me on that one? It's That one. And that's the big one. Okay. And then we'll talk about the sector in a moment. Uh, what's the base of my smaller triangle? What's the height? The height of my smaller triangle? Sine x. Not cosine x, right? Cosine x would be the sine x would be the height of the smaller triangle because that is actually a point on the unit circle. Do you believe me? So that would be sine x. And then, well. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. I'm off one. One times sine x over two. Are you okay with big triangle and small triangle? Are you alright with that one? Do you know how to find the area of the sector? Area of the sector. No, what are we talking about? Like which which one of these are we talking about? This is the sector. High slice. High slice. The area of the sector minus the small triangle. Sure. How do you find the area of the sector? Use a big triangle. <laughs> so there's actually a formula for it. It's this. It is your radius times your angle over two. Radius angle two. You ready for the math magic? You ready? But you have to buy into one thing. You have to agree that the area of the sector is in between the areas of the big triangle and the small triangle. Would you agree with that? It goes big triangle, then sector, then small triangle. True. So what we're saying here is that the area of the small triangle is less than the area of the sector which is less than the area of the big triangle. Agreed or not? Yeah. What can I do to the twos? If I multiply all those inequalities by two, which is legal, what happens to the twos? Twos are gone. Twos are gone. So what I'm going to do is change this into sine 
x is less than x is less than tan x. Some basic algebra. Basic algebra. You okay with that so far? Now, here's the cool part. What I'm going to do, I'm going to divide each of these three things by sine x. Where sine x is positive, it's in the positive quadrant. That's okay. We're talking about a positive angle right here. What that means is that we're not going to change around these inequalities. So then this does... Still okay with that so far? We divide everything by sine x. How much is tan x over sine x? 1 over cosine. Sine x squared. Say it again? 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine, because tan x is sine over cosine, yes? Divided <coughs> by sine. That means you flip, multiply. You're going to be getting rid of those signs. So you're going to get 1. Cosine. We're almost done. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reciprocate each of those fractions. I'm going to reciprocate the run, the, the run, the one, the x over sine x, and the one over cosine x. What that's going to do is also flip around my inequalities. If you reciprocate that, it's going to flip your inequalities. Does that make sense to you? That's a mathematical truth. So I'm going to have 1 still, because the reciprocal of 1 is 1, is greater than sine x over x, which is greater than cosine x over 1. Do you see this thing anywhere? Do you see it right in the middle? Do you see how it's squeezed between two functions? It's squeezed between 1 and cosine x. Does that make sense? Now here's the theorem. It's called the squeeze theorem. The squeeze theorem says if the limit of this goes to something and the limit of this goes to something, then the thing in the middle has to go to that same limit if these are equal. Does that make sense to you? It says I'm trying to take the limit as we go to 0. Agree? So then the limit of 1 What's the limit of the number 1 as x approaches 0? Can you tell me that? What's the limit of 1? doesn't matter what we're going to, right? The limit's 1. Tell me, what's the limit cosine x as x approaches 0? Now, what do you get of cosine of 0? What's cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is? It's not 0. It is 1. Here's what that says. Check it out. This is by the squeeze theorem. It says that right now, if I take the limit <coughs> sine x over x as x approaches 0, it was squeezed between two functions whose limit was 1 as we went to 0. It says the limit of 1 is 1. It says the limit of cosine as we approach 0 is also 1. What does this limit absolutely have to be? If it's between those two functions, the limit has to be between those two functions. Only they're going to the same number. What's that limit? It has to be 1. It's squeezed. It's saying the right bound is 1. The left bound is 1. Can it be anything different than 1? No. No. It has to be 1. Technically, I'm supposed to have these throughout the whole thing. And that's the big punchline for this part right now. We're not done right now.